A breakdown of the federal investigation of four Muncie police officers, how their 17 charges racked up. Derek Chauvin's trial is wrapping up, but we didn't hear from one key witness who declined to take the stand in moments. Will Indiana see a boost in funding for education? Why educators are fired up for funding? Johnson & Johnson still on the hold, the latest from Fauci and what he says about the distribution pause. Temperatures have been much cooler than average lately. How long will that last? I have all those details coming up. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. Good evening and thanks for being with us. I'm Anna Chalker. And I'm Grace Benkowski. We begin tonight, we're taking a deeper look into the accusations against four Muncie police officers who have been indicted on 17 different charges. NewsLink Indiana's Brittany Dobbins has been following this story since it broke yesterday. She's been digging through court documents all day. Brittany, what do you know? Well, Anna and Grace, I reached out to the mayor's office and in return, his office says that he will not be making any further comments on the investigation, but the accusations against the officers are a bit repetitive. Between March of 2018 and February of 2019, Officer Joseph Chase Winkle has been accused of using excessive force on five different arrests. In August of 2018, the indictment accuses Winkle, officers Jeremy Gibson, Corey Posey, and Joseph Krasia of covering up the arrest of a suspect with the initials LG. Winkle and Gibson are accused of using excessive force by kicking, stomping, and using knee strikes on LG's head. Court documents say Posey and Krasia did not do any physical harm. They, along with Winkle and Gibson, are accused of lying in the reports of the incident to try and influence the investigation. This incident was just one of the five accusations against Winkle, saying he used unnecessary force and false reporting. In another incident in May of 2018, officers Winkle and Gibson are again accused of kicking and punching suspect EM's head, which resulted in bodily injury. These incidents are similar to the others in the indictment against Winkle. Meanwhile, Gibson has three counts against him. Two are excessive force accusations and the other is false reporting. Newly indicted officer Posey has one count of false reporting and Joseph Krasia has two counts of false reporting, which were allegedly made in part to cover for Officer Winkle's actions. NewsLink Indiana reached out to community activist Cameron Grubbs to hear his feelings on what is going on in his own backyard. In a message, Grubbs says that he is deeply disappointed in the charges brought against the MPD officers. Communities should not be concerned about attacks from those sworn to protect and serve. Unfortunately, the charges also shine a light on the culture within departments to protect their partners rather than the people. There is a fundamental problem in law enforcement these days with increased militarization and excessive force. We have seen it across all walks and especially communities of color. Sadly, it is yet another reminder of the need to be vigilant and requiring accountability. We must institute zero tolerance policies when it comes to unnecessary violence from those who are expected to keep the peace. Now, all of this comes just a couple weeks after Governor Eric Holcomb signed a police reform bill in the law and even during the Derek Chauvin Clay trial and the death of George Floyd. Also following the death of Dante Wright, which was, has since led to charges against the officer who pulled the trigger. As we get more information, we'll be sure to bring it to you. But for now, live in the studio, Brittany Dobbins, NewsLink Indiana. Brittany, thank you. Both sides rest their case in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin without the former Minneapolis police officer ever taking the stand. Derek Chauvin told the judge just this morning that he will not testify in his own trial. Judge Cahill says that if they were going to present new evidence about lab results, he would declare a mistrial. Dr. Tobin, a pulmonologist, returned to the stand. He did not talk about lab results, but did talk about how there could only have been at most two carbon monoxide in George Floyd's blood. That is that the majority of it was oxygen. The judge adjourned the jury for the rest of the week. Court will resume Monday with closing arguments. But as the trial of a one former police officer nears the end, legal proceedings against another are just beginning. Former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter making her first court appearance via Zoom as she faces a second degree manslaughter charge in the death of 20 year old Dante Wright. In police body cam video, Potter shouts taser repeatedly before firing her gun instead. She says she mistook her gun for her taser. Potter shot Dante Wright, killing him. Now she faces that secondary manslaughter charge. She was booked and charged yesterday, but has since been released from jail, posting a $100,000 bail today. 
Indiana legislators have set up a possible court fight with Governor Eric Holcomb as they voted today to override his veto to give themselves more authority to intervene during emergencies. The Republican-dominated House and Senate got the simple majorities to turn aside GOP Holcomb's objections and put the provisions into law immediately. The measure is a new process under which legislative leaders can call the General Assembly into an emergency session. The legality of that process has been questioned by Holcomb and some legal experts. At the national level, progressive Democrats introduced legislation today to expand the Supreme Court to 13 justices. But even before the lawmakers formally unveiled the bill, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said today she has no intention of bringing it to the floor. It's not out of the question. It has been done before. And the growth of our country, the size of our country, the growth of our challenges in terms of the economy, etc., uh, might necessitate such a thing. Uh, but uh, in answer to your question, I have no plans to bring it to the floor, no. The time right now is 9.05, and speaking of the weather, I think it was comfortably cool today. Oh, yeah, it was pretty nice, but it was a little windy. Ryan, what's going on? Well, yes, it was a little bit breezy out there. Uh, we are going to see those t uh, temperatures remain cooler than normal for quite some time. So you will see on my seven-day forecast in just a bit. But right now, temperatures right now, it's cooled off a little bit. 45 degrees in Muncie, 45 degrees in Kokomo, and Fort Wayne is sitting at 42 degrees at this hour. And you look at those winds, yes, winds have been a little bit uh, gusty at times. But we calmed down a little bit. Look at it. We have really calmed down. Only three miles an hour in Muncie and seven miles an hour in Fort Wayne. Now you take a look at tonight. Temperatures are going to drop down to the lower 40s as we go through 1 a.m. But we actually might drop down to the 30s tonight. So we got to keep that in mind. Make sure you bring that sweater out when you go out, if you do go out. As you do, coming up, we're going to take a look at those seasonable temperatures. We also going to take a look at the mix of sun and clouds. And also, are we going to get any rain anytime soon? We have some rain chances this weekend. I have all those details coming up. Brian, thank you. Former Vice President and Indiana native Mike Pence is in recovery tonight after getting a pacemaker. The 61-year-old former Vice President and previ has previously been diagnosed with a heart condition and had experienced symptoms the past two weeks. His office says the operation went well and that Pence is, quote, expected to fully recover and return to normal activity in the coming days. CDC vaccine advisors say they need more time to make a recommendation about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It's currently on hold after reports of rare blood clots in women. Dr. Anthony Fauci says pausing this vaccine isn't the same as canceling it. He says he doubts that this pause will last weeks or even months. Fauci testifying in Congress today explaining the decision. There were two reasons to do it. One, out of an abundance of caution to, re to see what we're dealing with and B, to make sure they alert physicians about what to do with it. Hopefully, we'll get a decision quite soon as to whether or not we can get back on track with this very effective vaccine. If you've gotten the Pfizer vaccine, you'll likely need a third dose within a year. Pfizer CEO Albert Borla says people are likely to need a booster dose six to 12 months after their first round. From there, it'll be an annual revaccination. Officials are still testing the timing of follow-up doses. Borla shared the news during a CVS Health Live event on Facebook. He added that data shows the Pfizer vaccine is effective against different variants of COVID-19. And as the spring semester nears its end, college students around the nation are getting ready for their summer break. For many of them, getting back on campus this fall will mean getting vaccinated. That's because at least 25 U.S. colleges and universities will require students to get vaccines before they return for the fall semester. Some of those schools are also mandating vaccines for campus faculty and staff. Dartmouth College, Cornell University, and right here in Indiana, Notre Dame, they're among the schools requiring students to get vaccinations for the fall semester. Indiana educators are asking for a bigger boost in school funding to help improve the state's lagging teacher pay. New projections showed state tax collections could bounce back stronger than expected from the pandemic recession. This could mean about $2 billion more available for the next two-year budget. House Speaker Todd Houston says he expects a cautious approach, while the state's largest teachers union said the state should, quote, go, go big to address Indiana's lagging teacher pay. With billions of dollars toward child care in the United States, Vice President Kamala Harris announced today $39 billion from the American Rescue Plan going to child care centers and family child care providers. Today we are announcing the single largest investment in child care in our nation's history. The single largest investment in child care in our nation's history. 
Harris says COVID-19 has only, quote, accelerated the flaws in the United States child care system. The funds can be used to help facilities reopen or stay open as the pandemic continues. President Joe Biden met with President Vladimir Putin. The latest remarks from Biden next. And an Apple Watch can do a lot of things. How this technology on your wrist can help stop the spread of COVID-19. Stay with us. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, MITS will take you there. So I just moved in with his family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay. I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back. President Biden wrapping up his remarks tonight. He says he wants a stable relationship with Russia. Biden wants to meet with President Vladimir Putin in person this summer for a summit to address a range of issues for both countries. He says he's approved several steps in shifting our nation's relationship, including the expulsion of several Russian officials for their actions. He says he's also signed an executive order for new measures like sanctions for spe specific harmful actions that Russia has taken against U.S. interests. Two great powers with significant responsibility for global stability. And President Putin and I have had a significant responsibility to steward that relationship. I take that responsibility very seriously, as I'm sure he does. In your consumer headlines tonight, Apple is trying to figure out if your iPhone or Apple Watch can detect COVID-19. The company is teaming up with researchers to see if its devices can predict early signs of illnesses like the flu or the coronavirus. Information being collected includes heart rate, blood oxygen, sleep patterns, and even hand washing. The six-month study will use volunteers from the Seattle area. Disney Cruise Line is suspending all U.S.-based departures through June of 2021. The U.S.-based ships include Disney Dream, Disney Fantasy, and Disney Wonder. Disney said it's working with American officials in, quote, resuming operations. Customers impacted by the latest cancellations will be offered a cruise credit or a full refund. Retail sales skyrocketed last month thanks to the federal stimulus checks and COVID-19 vaccines. The Commerce Department reported that retail sales soared 9.8% in March compared to February. The rebound came after the distribution of the $1,400 stimulus checks included in President Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan, an improving jobs market, more people getting vaccinated, and loosened restrictions on stores and malls also helped. Some clothing retailers and restaurants hit hard by the pandemic say they hope to benefit from increased consumer demand in the coming months. The time is now 9.13, and Ryan, what's happening with that weather this week? Well, we see those temperatures being below normal for this time of the year. When we warm up, I have all those details coming up after the break. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. Go back and change it all. I can go back. I would. 
بخوره که Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back. The time is now at 916 and you're taking a live look at campus. You know, as we get closer to May, it's really starting to feel like those spring temperatures are coming. But today, it's starting to feel a little more like those fall temperatures instead of those spring temperatures. Right. Ryan, what could we be seeing? Well, actually, we could be seeing a little bit of a, basically a cool, cool stretch as we go through the next couple, uh, next week or next couple weeks. Look at this temperature right here. Yes, 51 degrees was actually a high today. 51, well below average for this time of year. We were supposed to be at 61 and nowhere close to the average there, uh, record high that we've seen of 83 degrees back in 2010. Now, if you look at these temperatures right now, uh, they haven't cooled off much, but it's at 45 degrees in Muncie, 42 degrees in South Bend, and Indianapolis is sitting at 48 degrees at this hour. The winds have also been an issue, but they kind of sort of calmed down a little bit. So you're seeing wind gusts at only three miles an hour and seven miles an hour right now and Fort Wayne. Now if you take a look at the next eight hours, you can see that those temperatures are going to begin to drop down into the 30s. Yes, 39 degrees, feeling more like October 15th more than April 15th at this time. But if you take a look at that radar, you know, the skies are beginning to clear out there. You know, right now we have some clouds earlier. It was mostly cloudy earlier. But now if you take a look at uh, a further view, you're going to see that we have this, a sandwich between two disturbances. We have one up here in the northeast and one down here uh, in Texas and Oklahoma right now. As you take a look at the precision cache, you're going to see that, again, we're going to stay relatively clear as we go through to, uh, tomorrow. And we will see those clouds begin to actually move in as we go through tomorrow, or Saturday, pardon me. And as we go through Saturday, you'll see, you see that there's some rain uh, a little bit further south of us. We shouldn't have to worry about that on Saturday, but we might have to worry about that a little bit on Sunday. As you see at this five, five day precipitation uh, chart, 30% chance on Sunday. But we have a better shot on Tuesday, I believe, as we go through the course of next week. Again, those chances are not very high, and we have been pretty dry the last few few days out there. For tonight, you're going to see mostly cloudy skies with a low of 37 degrees winds out of the northwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour. So you wake up tomorrow and you, those kids go out there for the bus away for the bus or going to work, you're going to see it's 43 degrees at 9 o'clock and as we go through the day, you're going to see that we're going to have a mist of sun and clouds and we're not going to warm up too much. So we're going to see temperatures around 60 degrees. As you look through this weekend, again, not very warm. 56 degrees is going to be our temperature. Northwest winds are 5 to 10 miles an hour. As you take a look at Sunday, um, we have a slight chance of showers with a high of only 60 degrees. Now that's pretty typical for this time of year because temperatures are around 61 degrees for our average high. Now you take a look at this jet stream. This will actually show you this is a river of, uh, of warm air and cold air separated by the jet stream. And you're going to see that it's not going to be a pretty it's not going to be uh, relatively uh, warm, as you see. The warm air is going to stay pretty much to our south, and yeah, the temperatures are going to reflect that in our seven-day forecast. As you see that, uh, 60 degrees on Friday, and then we're not going to move too much as we go through the uh, weekend into early next week. We see those rain chances on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we might get ourselves right back up to about 61 on Thursday. 
again, we talked about, I talked about this before, the transition where we had 80 degree temperatures a couple weeks and then we back to the 50s and 60s. So, I'm hoping those 80 degree temperatures come back soon. Oh, I love the summer temperature. Well, Me as, too, yes. As I was looking ahead, we're not gonna really see any of those type of temperatures as we go through. So, you know, hopefully it'll come later on, but sooner than later, but right now we're not seeing any. All right, well, thank you, Ryan. And Joey, what's happening in the sports tonight? Well, the MAC championship starting tonight for women's swimming and a school record has already been broken. And Ball State football returning tons of experience what their goals are for next season. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Problems. The ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness in this land of plenty seriously come on we could fix this help out or don't the choice is yours weeknights news link indiana brings you the news before you go to bed but friday mornings you're waking up with cardinal weather we've got the latest news headlines freezing temperatures have set in all the way down in louisiana one man dead after flooding in Venice, Italy. Up to the minute weather conditions. Cold temperatures are the story this morning. And of course, lots of fun. That's, it is not what funny. What on earth is happening I there? I feel sorry for the little guy. I've got my socks on. Weather. Annie with her curly hair, which is actually never curly. Join us Friday mornings at eight on Facebook Live. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Joey Moore with sports. The building of the Schumann Family Indoor Practice Facility commenced, but the team building for the Cardinals hasn't. This week marked the first of many practices for the Cardinals as they prepare for their 2021 season. Ball State had quite a season in 2020 and are looking to run it back. Newslink Indiana's Hannah McElroy has more. The football team is back on the turf and getting ready to run it back. Okay, so um, for us it's just we, we kind of had a group message that started off like right before, I think it was right after, right before the MAC championship and um, everybody was just kind of get a feel for what everybody else was doing and I think it was one of those things, it was like, all right, if you're coming back, I'm coming back, and kind of just trickle down effect. And for me, it was, um, I, I don't think I was the first one, but if I was, maybe, I mean, that's cool. But um, for me, it was just like, I mean, how, I didn't want to leave this place. I wanted to see this facility. I wanted to, I wanted to do it again with everybody that's here. Um, I had such a blast playing those eight games. I wanted to do it for 14 more. Despite the Cardinal and White Target on their back, the team's not afraid of what's to come. I love it. I, I love the fact that we're going to have a lot of pressure this year. I love the fact that we're going to be um, getting everybody's best. And I think I think it's going to put us in our best situation, and, and really we're going to be able to play the best ball that we can. Sophomore Nick Jones is one of the teammates who's ready to make his mark next season. Just making sure I go in and play with confidence. I know the guys around me, how talented they are, and they trust me to do my job. Yeah, so just know I trust them to do theirs. Not only does his team mean everything to him, but so does the success. It means everything just because I know we hadn't won one in a really long time here, and I'd never won one at any level. So just being a part of something special means everything. In Muncie, Hannah McElroy, Newslink, Indiana. We'll see our champs back in Schumann in September when they take on the Western Illinois Fighting Leathernecks. While Ball State football is getting ready to make another run at the MAC title next season, Women's Swimming started competing in their MAC championships tonight. The Cardinals traveling to Eastern Michigan looking to improve on last year's performance and take home their first team MAC championship in school history. Marcela Quiroz Ribeiro breaking a school record tonight in the 500 freestyle with a time of 4.48.37. 
Finals event starting tonight at 6.30 with the meet continuing at 6 on Friday night and at 6.10 on Saturday evening. Heading into their MAC championship game appearance, Lady Cardinals soccer collecting quite a few All-MAC honors. Leading the charge, head coach Josh Reif receiving MAC Coach of the Year following his impressive second year at Ball State. Nikki Potts earning first team honors for the second time in her career after her four assists and one goal on the season. Joining Potts with first team honors, Lexi Smith only allowing seven goals this season, as well as adding three assists. On second team, forward Tatiana Mason. Mason tied for a team high three goals this season, putting her at 11 for her three years at Ball State. And wrapping things up for the Cardinals, freshman Mack Henson following her impressive first season, including a game winner for her first career goal. And a lot of championship events going on for our Cardinals this weekend, and just really excited to see that. Yeah, I know. I hope, wish them the best of luck, and hope everything goes well with them. Thank you, Joey. A chance swim helped one man find a precious item. What and where the item was, next. And Panera is combining carbs and exercise. How you can get involved. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. Time to look at our anchor picks. First off, a husband once again now has his wedding ring, thanks to a stranger. Adam Papini lost his ring while swimming in Sacramento, California. Expert diver Carl Bly happened to find it there. Then he posted on social media and Facebookers actually tracked down Papini. He remembers realizing that his wedding ring slipped off during a casual swim. Faith came in the form of a diver determined to get the ring back to its happily ever after, to which Bly returned it to Papini at Sacramento Bar Park. Now, I feel like that is pure luck right there to it be able to really find a ring. It really is, because that's a lot of area exactly. to find that one ring. Well, here's some more area stuff. Panera Bread is putting carbs and exercise together in celebration for the upcoming Earth Day. The company is giving away 30 bikes like the one you're seeing here featuring a basket shaped like their famous and amazing bread bowls. To win one of those bikes and the awesome basket, just enter your name to the website created by Panera Bread by April 22nd. Earth Day celebrations will be held next week with the goal of coming up with ideas to address the climate change challenges. This year, organizers will hold live digital events, which can be seen at earthday.org. Now, soup and Panera Bread, more fall weather. Biking with Panera Bread, more spring weather. Ryan, are we going to be seeing more of those spring temperatures? Well, right now, we're going to see a little bit more of those fall light -like temperatures. Uh, we're not going to see too much of those temperatures going above pretty much 65, 60, 65 degrees. So we're going to see that, you know, we're going to see those temperatures stick around below average for most of this time of the year, for this time of the year. We also going to see some rain chances. But again, we still go, we're still pretty dry for right now, where we are right now. Again, you know, we're going to see temperatures stay below normal. 
I'm not mad about that rain coming because nope. the temperatures are looking pretty decent compared to what we've had in the past. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's all tonight for NewsLink Indiana. Be sure to join us again t tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for our sister show, Waking Up with Cardinal Weather. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night, everyone.